the winning crew chief of uh, the number 48 Superman, Lo Chevrolet. <laughs> How about that? I like that. That's cool, right? Check and now, Chad, that was uh, a, another exciting finish. Uh, a tremendous win for your team. Uh, tell us a little bit about those closing laps. Oh, wow. Man, I'll tell you what, it was, uh, we, uh, gosh, try to recap how all this went down. It's kind of uh, mind-numbing right now. You know, we, we obviously, we pitted with the second last pit stop. Uh, we short pitted everybody by a lap. And then the caution came out. Fortunately enough, Jimmy was able to get by the four car and stay on the lead lap. But we knew we were going to be in trouble having one full lap on our tires when everybody else was going to have stickers. And uh, unfortunately, we fell back a little bit. Uh, I think maybe to seventh or eighth. And Jimmy did a good job. He really did for what, for as aggressive as everybody was driving at that point. He managed his tires well and was able to get by a couple of other guys. And I think we were probably going to settle in about fifth or sixth. And um, when that caution came out, Coming down pit road, you know our our picker guys. They knew what they needed to do. They knew they had to try to get us some spots if we were going to have any shot at getting the victory with uh, with the Superman Chevrolet, and they did. Had a fantastic pit stop. I think we gained two or three spots, put us in third. And you know, honestly, I was telling Jimmy on that uh, just before that restart. I was like, buddy, dig in deep and go find that cape. And uh, he did. And. On that restart, he did really well. He got up on the four car, and they, they pushed past the, the car on the outside. He was able to drive down to the inside and, and blow by the four car and, and make it happen. So I couldn't be prouder. You know, Jimmy obviously is just an amazing, an amazing talent behind the wheel. And uh, for him to do what he did today, I think that just speaks volumes about what that man's capable of. We'll open up for questions now to Chad. If you'll please raise your hand, state your affiliation. We'll go here in this press box first and then go to the... Uh, two other press boxes. Questions for Chad. Okay, okay. we'll go Jerry Jordan first, and then we'll come back here, Kate. Chad, uh, yeah. going into the off week, I mean, this is when. How much? How much do you guys need this as far as from you know to rebuild and to and to get set up for for, <laughs> for even more? I mean, this is pretty big for y'all. Yeah, this is awesome. I, I, we, it's kind of an onstanding gag, right? You always want to try to win before an off week because the last two weeks. <laughs> that's that's the most uh, the best way you can ever set it up because typically as you guys know as soon as just like you guys as soon as we get back to the shop on Monday we're focused on the upcoming event so fortunately enough it's a long trip everybody gets to kind of fly home catch their breath uh, take a week to enjoy it we make sure uh, to emphasize with our guys that they do celebrate the victories and and go out there and enjoy it whether that be going out and partying at a club or whether it be going to get an ice cream with the kids, whatever that is, you know, whatever your way of celebrating is, we want to make sure they do that. And it's going to give the guys plenty of opportunity to do that before we head to Martinsville. So I'm, I'm glad about it. We're going to go to Kate and then we'll go to the Terrace Press Box. Hey, Presto Cars and Competition. Did Jimmy find any particular line that worked for him toward the end? You know, it was funny. We were... Uh, Obviously, you guys saw it as well as what we did. People were all over the racetrack, and I think that speaks volumes about this racetrack. Everybody loves this track. The only thing we don't like is the back straightaway is a little too bumpy. But the rest of the track is awesome. They run high, they run low, they do everything. And through the middle portion of the race, Jimmy was doing a very good job of managing that that half to three-quarter range and really saving his tires and managing the tires well. And I think if you guys look back at it, you see we really came on strong at the end of the runs, and he was doing a good job of that. Uh, for that last green-white checker finish, obviously he just drove it straight down to the bottom and was able to rail around the bottom and get past the four car. So um, it was. It, this is an awesome racetrack from that standpoint. It's. It's. This is what you want when you're a race team and a race car driver. You want to be able to go out there and slip and slide and drive, and, and that's what these guys had to do today. We'll go to the Terrace Press Box now. Jeff Gluck from USA Today. Um, Jimmy is obviously continues to move up the ladder in career wins. Um, can he catch Gordon? He needs 16 more. How many do you guys have in you? Man, let's just worry about the next one. How's that? Uh, you just if you start shooting goals like that, you, you can't do it. You know, the thing that you have to do from my standpoint is we have to worry about going to Martinsville and and trying to win that race. First, we have to worry about practicing well and, and qualifying well and then winning that race. And then we have to do the same thing going to Texas and then so on and so forth throughout the rest of the season. Um, you're, I don't put the cart before the horse. You guys know that. So we focus forward and that's all we're worried about. Any additional questions in the Terrace Press Box? Questions? No further questions. Thank you. Any additional questions downstairs here? We'll go right over here, please. <clears throat> um, this is kind of like the 
the first Here's a microphone right here for you. The, Thank the you. opening of the season is now over. You're now going to get into the bulk of the summer. What's the one thing you guys need to focus on to continue towards the summer where we get into the hot months? Yeah, that's, that's obviously been... Uh, uh, the Achilles heel of the 48 car going through the summer months when the years where it's great It's fantastic where years where it's bad. It's just oh my gosh. You want to slit your wrist. So um, we're, we're really this year We're not going to worry about the summer months as much as what we need to obviously especially now since we've been able to uh, Capture the second victory which you know essentially locks us into the chase uh, What we're gonna do is we're gonna focus forward put our efforts into going into Chicago, New Hampshire those first few races of the chase, that's that's our main focus at this point. So we want to perform well and win as many races as we possibly can, and this obviously provides an opportunity for us to go out there and be aggressive and do things maybe that might be a bit uncharacteristic or um, un, un, unnormal. Uh, is that a word? Unnormal? Atypical. Atypical. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, to, to do that kind of stuff, to try to make things happen. But uh, right now, we're going to just try to solidify what it is that we need rolling into the chase. Okay, we'll go to Kenny right here, please. <clears throat> Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. A, a couple of things. First of all, was was it a difficult race to call with everything that happened, the way the way cautions were falling and and the tire wear that people were concerned about? And also, uh, we keep hearing you know teams are trying to gain back the downforce that was taken away. Sure. How far along do you feel like you guys are at, at getting that back? I don't feel that we're running. Uh, as, as strong as what we need. I think we're okay, for sure, uh, obviously. Uh, but I think that from from my standpoint, uh, we should be doing a little bit better. And look, let's be honest. When you lose or our job as teams is to build the best race car we possibly can. We want to build the most downforce. We want to build the most mechanical grip. And we want to build the most horsepower. He who does that wins, period. That's how it works, right? So we have to try to do that on all levels. We need more horsepower. We need more downforce. We need more mechanical grip. And we're going to do that to the best of our ability 100%, you know, because once you do that, then you have all the other aspects of the race team that you have to work on, pit crew, pit stops, so on and so forth. So um, we're not where we want to be from my standpoint. We've got a good product, but I'm hoping by the come chase time we're going to be better. Call on the race, honestly, this, this race is, uh, the way this race f went by was, and don't take this lightly, but a fairly fairly easy race to call because of the the stint was so long in between cautions that you knew you had to take four tires. If you didn't take four tires, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, where it gets hairy is when you do a couple of runs and, you know, when you get towards the end of the track, end of the race, and there's 25 cars on the lead lap because of the wave around and you get some guys in the back, maybe want to stay out. That's where it gets hairy here this weekend. Uh, for this event today, it was not that difficult to call. The only thing that you had to be cognizant of was, you know, what you were doing with your left side tire pressures, uh, your right rear tire pressures. And as a team, you had to pay attention to that to make sure you didn't have a failure. Okay. Any additional questions for Chad? Thanks, Thanks guys. Much. Congratulations. Thank you.